Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for your uh, your time tonight. Uh, we really appreciate everybody's attendance tonight, and and really uh, appreciate your flexibility in in how we're presenting tonight's event. Um, if you're not aware, this is our fourth annual event to celebrate National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Unfortunately, this is the first time we've had to do it virtually, so you know, we really appreciate your patience as we work through this new format. So, well, not only has uh, COVID had an impact on us tonight, but it's also had an impact on our programming that we've been offering for over 48 years now. So not only has it in impacted us to have our programs impacted back in March, but it's also had a significant impact on those that we serve. So historically, we, we've been able to provide a lot of in-person work. We've been provided you know, a lot of support for those that are job seeking or just individuals that are looking to enhance their, their, their daily living. So that all came to a screeching halt in March. We were forced to really reevaluate how we program, how we look, how we serve, and, and all the things that we've done for the number of years. Fortunately, we've been able to transition a lot of those services to virtual. So a lot of the face-to-face -face work that we've been able to do, either through our support coordinators or some of our skills trainers, was able to be done through a format just very similar to what we're doing here tonight. So we're able to engage people while they're in their homes at a safe distance and really be able to give that engagement that a lot of our folks were missing during this pandemic. And that all would not have been possible without our dedicated staff who also not only were our consumers forced to change and do things differently, but our staff. Our staff were, 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 were tremendous during this entire process where they were adaptive to be able to understand what additional cleaning protocols we needed to place, what, what procedures we needed to do to make sure that not only themselves were safe, but also that we serve um, are also safe while, while they're returning back to program. So what we've seen since, since June, we were open, we've seen our stores really do some wonderful things. We, we want to thank the communities who have continued to support our thrift stores by bringing those donated items to our thrift stores every day. We, we, when we pull up and we see bags ready for, you know, for, for, for sorting or, or the honk of a horn knowing that somebody's out in the back dropping off some clothes, really tell us that we're making a point or making a, uh, a difference in, in the communities that we serve. So, so again, thank you for, for embracing those, those stores and the return to, um, to, to shopping at those stores. So tonight, um, we don't want to talk about too much about business. We want to highlight exactly the things that I've talked about that we've, where we revamped and we relooked in terms of how we're doing things and celebrating those that have done some really, really cool things because of the programs that we've had in place. So what you're going to see tonight, you're going to see some, some videos about our partnership with Special Olympics. You're going to see a couple of our teams that have participated over the past couple of years. You're going, to, you're going to see our art program and the talented artists that have been on display for about the past three years participating in exhibits around the communities and, and so on. And then you're going to see our culinary program. You're going to see highlighting those talented cooks that are going to uh, hopefully transition into a job in a restaurant or be able to just uh, be able to be a little bit more independent as they live their lives in the future. So please just sit back and, and enjoy uh, tonight's event. Um, we're, we're hoping by this time next year, we'll be able to see everybody face to face. But in the meantime, we're just really thankful that you're a part of this evening. Uh, so I have the pleasure of introducing Sarah and Lauren from Special Olympics, who's gonna be in our, our next video, highlighting again our relationship with Special Olympics. So sit back and enjoy yourself. My name is Sarah Jardine. And I um, am in a newly created role in Detroit Public Schools Community District. Um, it is the supervisor of uh, adapted physical education and Special Olympics for Detroit Public Schools. And um, I've been a teacher there for 18 years before that, as well as I'm the area director for uh, Detroit Area 26, so the community-based program for Detroit. How did you become involved with services to enhance potential? Absolutely. So I got a phone call from uh, Lauren Glover, who I think you guys will hear from soon. And he was inquiring about how we could start a basketball team for um, the services to enhance, enhance potential group as well as the ARC group. So we combined forces with ARC and STEP and created this awesome basketball team. And it was um, under the time that I was here, it was the first community-based team developed in Detroit. How do you think the population we serve would benefit from support from the community or more support from the community? Absolutely. So um, making sure that this team has what they need 
and being able to get them to where they need to go um, has been somewhat of a fundraising challenge. Uh, at times, we have had to reach out to the community to ask for additional support so that these athletes could get to participate in the kind of activities that we offer at Special Olympics. And Services to Enhance Potential has stepped up to help make sure that the athletes get what they need and that they can have transportation to go to these games as well as admission costs and fees. So the community, by supporting services to enhance potential, is providing this opportunity for these athletes to come do what they love. What does the future look like for when Special Olympics do return for the Step Arc basketball team? Absolutely. Well, we have these wonderful teams right now, and we are growing. And we need support so that we can continue to offer the basketball program as well as other programs um, to all of our services to en enhance potential students here in Detroit, or athletes, I should say, here in Detroit. We want to expand this program. We want to be able to allow any player with Special Olympics to participate that would like to. And right now we can't do that unless the community is able to support services to enhance potential so that we can make sure we offer these uh, resources and opportunities to all of the athletes in Detroit. Some of these athletes had played on a championship team many years ago when they were with uh, Detroit Public Schools and they did not have the opportunity to play basketball again until Services to Enhance Potential inquired and stepped up to create this team. And the only way that we've been able to do that is through Services to Enhance Potential. So I feel strongly about your mission in line with our mission. And I really hope that the community will step up to support you in any way so that we can make sure we keep doing these great things. I'm Lauren Glover. I'm the Assistant Executive Director of ARC Detroit. Uh, graduate of Grand Valley State University. Been in Arc Detroit since about seven years now. And we do a lot of good stuff at Arc Detroit with people with disabilities. So we're mostly an advocacy group. We have advocates for kids in the school system. We advocate for adults. And we also do Special Olympics basketball. We have a, a People First program that we meet at STEP once a month. People First is for, it's like advocacy people for people with disabilities, helping them advocate for themselves. So we have guest speakers, we might have uh, politicians, we might have uh, people from CMH to come talk about what's going on and how could they help people with disabilities. And the people from People First tell them what they need. And that is a lot of people from STEP and we meet at STEP. So that's how I got involved with STEP. Okay, great, great. And explain to us your role uh, with the Step Arc Detroit Special Olympics basketball team. I am the head coach. <laughs> so uh, we have one team and we're well, two teams. We're going to go expand to a third team. So right now I'm the head coach and we have another coach that's a board member of the Arc and we're looking for a third coach for a third team. And what areas do you think our population that we serve could benefit from support from the community? Well, inclusion, because our big thing in our population is inclusion. A lot of people from STEP, they go on to a regular jobs, uh, we call it competitive employment, and with our basketball team, we, we do a three-on-three -three with the Pistons in the summer. That's also was canceled. And they practice like at a park outside here, and they, we did, they practice to pick up basketball. So it's three on three, and we just pick up with anybody in the community. So anybody shows up, that's who they play. And the community has been real good with our people, with our with our guys, and you know, playing basketball with them. So they really enjoy that. But the biggest thing is inclusion. Mm -hmm. And what are plans for the Step Arc basketball team once Special Olympics resume? Oh, we're gonna get a gold medal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as soon as Special Olympics resume, we're going to start practicing again. Uh, hopefully we have the same practice facility. We're looking at a couple other facilities to practice in. And we're going to hopefully start in uh, next year. The basketball season usually starts in February. We usually start practicing in November. So it may be not, maybe to the year 2021, 2022. I don't know yet. But we'll see. We'll see. We're going to continue. And can you share with us a little about Athletes Without Limitations? Athletes Without Limits, it's a international team. 
like Special Olympics is only in the United States. Athletes are limits is international. So still playing people in the United States, we'll play people from Australia, or Japan, China. And the only thing is we have to get to Australia to play in the, in the tournament. So we've been invited to put a team for the U.S. because the U.S. didn't have a team. And one of the members is Ian Conyers, the former senator from Detroit. He asked me to put a team together, to help put a team together. So I got a few of my players, a few players from uh, Pontiac, and some more players from different states. So we're going to put a team together, get them over to Australia, and get a gold medal for the United States. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's very exciting. And sort of in close, what would be your message to viewers right now? Support STEP. STEP is a very good program. It does inclusion because I see a lot of guys grow from the workshop into competitive employment. So support STEP, it, they, they have to mark right on inclusion and getting guys and gals in competitive workplace. Uh, the help, you know, they help us for, you know, a lot of things that we need help for, you know. And I'm glad for that, you know. All the years that I've been there, you know, I've been working in and out. So, yeah, I like it. Being with these guys is pretty cool. I mean, I've been to uh, Little Caesars Arena, played on the three-on-three -three tournament. Got second place. We were hoping for first, but at least we came out second. And what's your favorite part about Steph? Sweeping the four and the see the old boy picking that four up. It's nasty. I get the boom and put it in the garbage. Okay, and is that your job? Yes. Okay. And your favorite part about Steph? Uh, playing basketball. What's your favorite part about basketball? Uh, being on the team. I like to be on it. I'm part of the basketball team. I like to be all these my, my, my guys and step people. Exciting. So, um, what's your favorite part so far? Well, the uh, pass on my teammate. Passing to your teammates. Yeah. Great. And what's your favorite part about being on the team? Uh, just passing to my. To, to my teammates. Sometimes I shoot as much, but not all the time. I'll be passing it to the other teams. Yeah, and I'll be doing layups and stuff like that. Um, my favorite part of basketball is being the team player and uh, being a, a great center and winning medals. Okay, great. And what are some things that you're working on right now? Communication. Uh, my skills to involve myself with others and um, communication in the in in the community. Okay, awesome, awesome. And yeah. Uh, what is something you are working on? Uh, we're, we're working on um, um, basketball and uh, <laughs> get my uh, all skills better and uh, just it being all better and then before, yeah. I'm, I'm 63. 63, okay. Yeah. And tell me about the medals you've won. So you've won gold, silver. Gold, silver, and... Uh, and bronze. And, and who? And bronze. And bronze, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. What do you like about basketball? I like to, I like to play good. See, I like to uh, play defense and offense, yeah. Greetings everyone, my name is Tamaria White. I am the Director of Program Services for Services to Enhance Potential. And today I will be talking to you about two of the programs that I oversee. The first program is our art program. We started our art program approximately six years ago now. And we started with the concept of we saw a lot of our individuals in our resource centers doing different artwork 
um, during their downtime, um, drawing and coloring, and um, we thought maybe we can start a class. So we started our art class um, and started with approximately 15 individuals who we discovered had a lot of artistic talents. Um, so we have progressed to doing mosaic art, we've done three-dimensional art, we've, they've worked with clay, making figurines, um, they've done greeting cards, we make art calendars um, every year that we are able to um, sell to our stakeholders, um, individuals and their families, and we also share that profit with them. So we are very proud of the growth and development of our art program. We now service our individuals at our resource centers with classes um, Monday through Friday, and we also have art programs out in the community Tuesday through Friday. So we are very proud of our art program. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, my name is Ray Ackley. I am the art instructor for the art program here at Services to Enhance Potential. And when we started this program six years ago with just a couple classes, just to see how it would work as a skills training class, what we were able to develop is a program that is a direct reflection of the mission of STEP, which is training, skill enhancement, uh, promoting independence and personal confidence for the consumer on a day-to-day -day basis. So through art, we've been able to enhance people's skills in not only focus and stamina, but increase their productivity, their ability to follow instructions, um, their ability to um, overcome mistakes, um, and, and build their confidence through learning art as a communication tool. We've built the program now to almost 20 studio art classes uh, for all levels. We have intro to art, we're doing fiber arts, and we've even included some advanced classes for those that have really embraced the procedural parts of art and are allowed to take on much bigger projects. Um, we're very proud of the fact that we've sold hundreds of pieces of art over the years to all manner of folks through gallery quality shows um, throughout the entire Wayne County area. And we're looking to build the program even more. It's, we're, I'm, I'm happy to say it's very popular um, because it's a way for people of all levels to engage and, and get direct results um, you know, from the work that they're doing. Sometimes just by following basic instructions, other times by experimenting. We all learn more when we fix our own mistakes rather than just start over again. And art is exceptionally good in that way. So we're very proud of the program. It continues to grow and, you know, sky's the limit. We only limit ourselves when it comes to art. I've been in the art program here at STEP for about a March when I came in to March. It's one been one year, year about, about a year and eight months. And I've, I've been in two books. I saw the picture at a uh, gallery in Detroit, in, in Detroit, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Ray is responsible for all that stuff. He teaches me how to draw, he teaches me how to shade, gives me assignments. What's your favorite color? My favorite color is green. Believe it or not, it is green. Tell me more about that. The green, I feel like it's so, so pretty because it's like, it just, it just looks lovely sitting there, a, a perfect green, mm -hmm. a perfect, like a yellow, blue combination of colors. Looks so pretty sitting there on a pile of things. And I always liked it, the color green. It's not because of money. I like the color green because it's green. <laughs> and uh, now we're famous because we got a book, Happiness. It's about a happiness setting. Everybody is happy in the book. So that's what it's all about as a book. What was your contribution? My contribution were two pictures. One was a kid playing in a puddle of water in a back city of an alley. He's being happy. He's playing. So that's what it was. The other one was snowing. She was, they just, 
was snowing, she liked snow, so it was like everything was happy about that picture and everybody liked it. Honestly, like it gives you gives you a chance to express yourself. It gives you a freedom. And pretty much the people here are here are really nice. So honestly, um I actually look pretty forward every every week to come here. Because usually it gets kind of like boring working in the studio by yourself. But when you're surrounded by really amazing people, like it's a great way to, to meet new people. It's a great way to get inspiration. And honestly, I'm glad to work with the people in the art class. What's your favorite color? Purple. Tell me about purple. The color purple comes with many meanings. It comes with the meaning of loyalty, peace, and is in many, etc. So about my art, like it's all like expressing through creativity. And pretty much I've done these a long time ago. And I love the fact that as I'm as I'm going on throughout the years, they all evolve and they start growing and becoming more beautiful, more details. Like this stuff was probably done back in maybe 2015 or 16. And honestly, I love how it's all evolving. You can watch your work grow as, over the time. Hi, Jessica. Hi, how are you? Today? I'm good today. How are you? I'm great. Okay, how does it make you feel to be in art class? It makes me feel good that I can be around my peers and do, and do d different art projects, do different art uh, projects that I can take home and tell my, uh, and show my artwork off to my aunt to let her know that I did this, I accomplished this today. Do you have like a favorite color? Uh, red. Red, I love, I love the color red, and I love how it brings out everything, you know. And I, and I just, I got a feel for red, the atmosphere, you know. And like I say, I want, I want the, the art class to expand and do more so if we, so if, so we can have an art fair of some sort to show off what we did. You know? That would be nice. Wonderful. To have an art fair to show off all our work and our accomplishments. Okay. And I believe I can accomplish anything if I put my mind to it. Greetings, everyone. My name is Tamaria White. I am Director of Program Services. And today I will be talking about our culinary arts program. We started our culinary arts program approximately eight years ago. It started with the idea of our individuals learning independent skills, as we talked about this in our resource centers, part of their goals. How to cook, how to shop, how to appropriately um, eat healthy, um, how to saute, bake versus frying. Um, we found that they learned better with actual demonstrations. So that is how our culinary arts came about. We obtained a certified chef that also worked with special needs individual and that combination has turned into eight years of a wonderful culinary arts program. We started with approximately 15 individuals um, with the staff uh, closely supervising them. And they started off making simple soups and different sandwiches and we have evolved into preparing three to seven course meals, desserts, we have catered some events, we have individuals now um, that attend uh, with the number exceeding 50 a week so individuals are able to prepare different kind of meals. We have also prepared um, and developed two different uh, cookbooks that we've been able to sell and the individuals uh, received compensation for that as well. So the cookbooks, the recipes range from desserts, soups, meats, vegetarian dishes, gluten-free um, uh, meals, as well as different smoothies and drinks so that every individual with different um, nutritional needs can have something in that cookbook that they can identify with and prepare. We also broke down the safety aspects 
in the cookbook so that individuals at different levels will have pictures and language that will guide them to preparing meals on their own. And the goal was to learn, teach them how to cook, but also to help some obtain employment out in the community. Some of our individuals, as a result of the nutritional classes, have been able to obtain cooking, um, cook-related um, employment out in the community at different restaurants. We've had several of our individuals hired at restaurants downtown Detroit, throughout the Wayne County community. Um, several are still employed at our zoo. So our nutritional class has afforded us great opportunities for our individuals beyond the classes. So your name is Sunny? Yes, I'm uh, Sunny. Okay, Sunny. And how long have you been taking these cooking classes? I'm learning how to cook and the fantasy and glad she can rock and I, I can do it. I'm glad the chicken, taggy, like that, lasagna, spaghetti, chili, like that. What, what do you like about cooking? I like to cook the food. So your name is Linda. Yeah. And you attend the cooking class here at What's Cooking in Westland? Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to join the cooking class, Linda? Because I like to learn to cook. Okay. What kind of things have you learned already? We made chicken and soup. And have you been cooking at home now since you learned stuff? What have you cooked at home? We got roast, potatoes on the roast. Get the juice and put it on your potatoes. Ooh, that sounds really good. So, what is it that you like best about this class? I like it. What 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 do you like about it? Do I hear them learn how to cook? Hi, I'm Terry Delisle. I'm the director of the Employment and Training Services Department at STEP. What we do in our department is to help prepare job seekers for um, employment. Um, so if someone is starting out and they're not even sure what they want to do, we help them explore different careers. Um, we help them talk about what skills they have and what interests they have. Um, and we kind of go from there. One of the ways that we do on-the-job training is uh, with our thrift stores. We have three thrift stores, Dearborn Heights, Southgate, and Wayne. And we um, do training there for retail, customer service, anything that you would learn in a store. Um, participants there can learn that and then um, that helps prepare them for jobs. We also work with employers in the community where we do paid internships and work trials. Um, we try to partner with businesses that have a lot of different options for people to explore such as hotels and hospitals, restaurants, that kind of thing. Really any kind of interest that someone has, we have an employer partner that can help them learn that uh, that skill, learn that trade, learn whatever it is, and help them to get jobs. Bundled is a gifting company. Um, we are an online service. We have personal gifting and we specialize in corporate gifting. Yeah, and then the role Step plays in Bundled is they work with our Quicken Loans account. And what they do is they assemble a welcome bundle that when a new client works with Quicken Loans, QLMS, they receive a gift. And then when they close a mortgage through QLMS, they receive another gift. So the step team will assemble the gift. They'll fold the shipping boxes. They'll do the ribbon. They just from start to finish will assemble those gifts for us. And it is our most important client. So it shows how much we trust our step employees and how amazing they are that we really do trust our biggest and best client in their hands. We feel just so lucky to have the consumers from STEP be a part of our bundled business. Every consumer, um, Mark, the jo our job coach, oh, is just everybody is phenomenal. We can't say enough about what a wonderful experience it's been to partner with STEP. So we're really grateful. I am Tiffany Devon. I am the Director of Communications for the Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network, and I have been here for two years. 
Great, and tell us why Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network decided to partner with STEP for custodial work. The Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network is passionate for people receiving services. And we know that we have many, many people that we support that are always looking for gainful employment. We're fully behind step for all the work that they do in terms of finding jobs for people that we serve. Everybody, if they want to, should be able to earn a good paycheck and a living wage. And we support and stand behind what step does. Being the largest community mental health agency in the state, we rely heavily on our provider network, whether it's residential, outpatient, substance use disorder providers, children's providers, and STEP is an integral part of that because they offer employment opportunities. So we have to make sure that all of our providers are doing what they say they're going to do, and STEP has really, I think, expanded a lot and got the word out that they do what they do and they do it well, and I think that's important. And I think that when you think of somebody with a mental health issue or disability, you think, well, they can't do anything, but that's absolutely not true. You want people to look at your ability and not your disability. How you doing? My name is Samuel Jenkins, and I'm, I'm coming to work to clean up. And what are some of your responsibilities here? What do you do for cleaning up? Clean the uh, bathroom, clean the kitchens, Empty the char, I mean, empty the, the trash cans, wipe the, wipe the... Doorknobs. Doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sweep and mop the, the bathrooms and the, uh, the kitchens and everywhere else. How long have you worked here? Um, two, two years. Okay, and how do you like it? It's, it's beautiful. It's all right. It's exactly. okay. If another company is in need of custodial services, what would be your recommendation to them for us? I would highly recommend STEP. I would support STEP working at any other organization, and I would recommend the crews because they are professional. They do care about the people that they're working for. And uh, what would you say is the best part about our partnership? I think the best part about our partnership is that our mission and vision aligns with each other and that we're on the same page. So at the end of the day, in this field, you really do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I think STEP's mission aligns very well with Detroit Wayne, and I believe we have a very good partnership. Uh, you are at Stonecrest Center. We're located at 8 and Gratiot. We're a 182-bed acute care psychiatric facility. My name is Elliot Brown. I'm the Director of Operations. I have been with Stonecrest for five years. And about six years ago, we decided that, you know what, this organization, their mission statement is very similar to our own. People that come in from STEP, uh, they are either going to be working in the clerical departments, so they help uh, out in our medical records, our accounting, doing paper filing, things of that nature. Um, currently, we're utilizing their janitorial services, so the housekeepers are responsible for cleaning all of our second floor, our new hire orientation room, as well as our lobby, and that is crucial not only in these trying times, but also just in general because they provide a very clean environment for our patients that are coming in seeking help, as well as our patients' loved ones. I highly recommend partnering with services to enhance potential. You absolutely will not regret it, and it's going to be an incredibly rewarding experience for you. Not only are they going to help you with your own operational logistics by potentially plugging holes in departments where you're lacking, but also what's extremely rewarding about STEP is you're going to see growth and individuals get fostered. They have a very professional group of staff that work with them. They're here every day and they're really working to help coordinate and give these people a chance that they probably wouldn't have otherwise. And that's not only incredibly rewarding to you to be able to watch that, but then they're also helping you maintain your facility. So it's a win-win. The best part of working together is just seeing people grow and shine. Just, you know, with Courtney and Tiffany, people who have been with us for a very long time. From when they started, they would be shy. They'd be a little timid. You know, they might not know their job duties as well when they first start out. And you just, you watch them just grow 
like day after day, week after week, and eventually they're part of your team. Okay. Um, well, I'm telling the care one of the uh, employment reps was the step agency, and um, I've had really good experience working with Kroger's over the years. They've been accommodating to our people in several ways, not just with scheduling, but uh, also with uh, job duties and tasks. They let us come in and assist them, of course. Um, so, um, it's been a great partnership through the years. Great partnership. All right, uh, I'm Amit Kacha. I'm uh, Managing Director at Feast, and uh, Feast uh, is Food Entrepreneur Accelerator and Startup Terminal. Uh, it's a mouthful, but uh, it, it, it says what we're here to do, right? We're, help, uh, we're here to empower local food brands and uh, help them scale up. About, about two years ago, we partnered with Step. That I, I just absolutely love our partnership with Step. Uh, we were also fortunate enough to have uh, an individual on that crew that uh, started to come in here that we all really liked. and. Uh, were eager and he was so eager Hassan uh, was always he was in my office uh, if, if I say at least at least once a week uh, I mean, what are what are you hiring when can I be a part of this team permanently and, uh, so when we were able to we brought Hassan on and uh, we're, we're thrilled to have him on our team He's, he does a great job uh, and he's so excited every time he learns something new every time uh, he actually gets to work on the production line. He is thrilled about it and uh, will let everybody know, hey, I'm doing this today and I've, I've learned something new. Uh, so it's, it's fantastic. Go ahead and go. Hi, my name is Hassan. I work at Feast. Um, How long have you been here, Hassan? For one year. And did you work any place before this? I did actually. I, I worked for Stop for 16 years, and I enjoyed over there. Uh, I met a lot of wonderful people, and uh, I learned a lot of uh, hand-on trade. I learned how to multitask. I didn't do one thing. I did a whole bunch of things. Um, um, I do dishes. I do janitor work. Um, I do help out like cleaning. Packaging? Packaging. Yeah, I do the packaging too. What do you like best about working here at Feast? Um, well, it's not the job I like, it's the people in the job. Because uh, if you got good workers, then the job will be good. And everyone, if everyone gets along, then they goes amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, it feels good to be employed, you know, it's, it's better than not having a job because some people are having a, a tough time right now, so it's a blessing to have a job. You know, uh, disability doesn't mean anything, you know, uh, if you can do it, you can do it. I work at Feast, I do a lot of things here, and I'm disabled, I'm proud of it, but I don't, nothing stop in my way. It doesn't matter if someone laughs at you because someone left at them back. So I just move on, keep on rolling, and let's have fun. Leah Page Cooley. I am the regional retail sales manager for Step Thrift Stores and Donation Center. Uh, we began the thrift stores in 2007. So our lifeblood as far as revenue in the stores is the donations from um, outside sources. Since we are a nonprofit agency, people can donate items and write them off on their taxes, as well as also knowing that every item that they are bringing in provides some sort of direct support and training for an individual. Uh, we take donations of all sorts and sizes. I've seen everything over the last 20 years that you can possibly imagine. Uh, our biggest seller by far are clothing, shoes, uh, that type of, um, you know, linens, that type of thing, housewares. We do sell furniture, uh, you know, anything that's going to come in that I can turn around and sell quickly, I'm going to put it out there on that floor. And that's how we 
take care of a portion of our expenses and overhead. And then the other aspect of the store operation is the skills training that we provide to individuals. And in providing that training, our goal is to give them a model that they would encounter out in the real world. So when we were developing how we were gonna run the system and, and merge those two, uh, those two systems, what we wanted to look at is I, I wanted to be able to give them support but then also understand if they were working at say a Walmart or a CVS that they were going to be held accountable for not only their actions and their productivity and their professionalism but I didn't want them to get so discouraged I wanted it to be a stepping stone so that um, they knew what to expect so when they did move on it was not such a big uh, um, shock that they ended up coming back you know so our goal was to uh, get them used to what the retail sector is out in the the regular private sector so that they had a realistic expectation when they were moving forward into another position into another company my name is Kelly Boniface I, uh, when I started at the STEP program, I started receiving services in uh, 2009, and then I came work for the uh, first work in Southgate in 2011, and then I had to leave the training program in 2019, and then I apply for the sales clerk job um, uh, in August of this year. And what's what's your favorite part about STEP? Um, because they have like production at workshop and they do a lot of stuff and they we talk it's too loud it's like loud too loud at the workshop sometimes and we um, we lunch there and they have they have a lot of people there, some uh, five people. Right five now. people right now because of the COVID. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're not have a lot of people at the at the workshop right now. Tell us about how you found your outfit today. Oh, uh, because I found it here and I'm putting my outfit on and then I wanted to model model in. I wanted to be a, I wanted to be at the workshop sometimes. I like the workshop. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Welcome. So, so Pam, tell me what your name is and how many years you've been at STEP. My name is Pamela Lynn Haggerty, and I've been with STEP for now, I believe it's nine months. Okay, great. And tell me where we are right now and how you found your outfit today. Um, well, I came with STEP, and they told me to pick out an outfit for an interview. And so I looked through, and I picked out everything that I I have on now. <laughs> so everything you're wearing came from Step Thrift Stores, yes, right? Yes, I did. Okay, great. So um, do you have a job right now? Um, I'm just working for Step right now, but eventually they'll want me to get out into the community. So what what do you like about Step, working for Step? Well, there's a, vari there's a large variety of things to do, and I find it interesting, and it's also um, it's fun to work at Step because all the people are really nice and everything and they make it pleasant for you to work and it's a lot of fun and it's you know the work's not that hard but you have to make sure it's done right just like any other job so every you have to check people's work and things like that and count the parts and uh, I have done a lot of piece work um, I'm on hourly now but I basically count the parts and then uh, you know, I dump the bins and give them more parts if they need it or not. My name is Peter. I know that you go to Fleece and Thank You, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what do you do once you get at Fleece and Thank You? Um, pass the blankets. Yep. Yep. Okay, so you put together blankets, right? Nope, they do it. I they pass do. them. You pass the blankets. Yep. All right. Can you tell me your name? Samantha Nelson. 
Okay, and how many years or how long have you been at STEP, Sam? I used to do stock work at Walmart. At Walmart? Tell me how you found your outfit today. Working in class. Working in class? What's your favorite part about STEP? My favorite part about STEP is um, going out on, on outings. Outings. What's your favorite outing? My favorite outing dinner is um, a, a lighthouse. It's a church. Okay. I go, I go with my skill trainer, Bob. He put, he, he funny. Yeah, and what do you do at the Lighthouse Church? I clean it up. Um, I, I pack up food, put them, um, put them together. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, like the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the outfit you're wearing today. I'm wearing a purple suit. I'm wearing my, it's like a Steve Harvey suit. I got my purple socks. I choose, I choose myself. Nice. That's, that's what Monica told me to choose my outfit for myself. That's so, it. if you were to go to a job interview, Jeremy, what? Why would it be important to wear a suit? Because, because you have to be important. Because you, you have to look decent. Not okay. coming today. Mm-hmm. Look professional, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you, nope. you can't wear no blue jeans. You have to wear a suit. Why do you have to wear a suit? Because you don't. You have to be. You have to respect people. Respect people. Okay, so wearing a suit shows that you respect somebody. Yes. Okay. That's, right. um, that's, um, that's um that's what Bob that's what um Natalie taught me today. You had to be spec you like you got a dress on, I got a suit on. And you got you got an interview with me today. Mm-hmm. Yep, we respect each other. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so tell me what you did at your job there. I uh, I did um I, I hanged in I um what's that thing called? I did um I did to take out the trash and stuff. Okay, so what job do you want to work in the future? Uh, um, make, my own, make my own videos, make my own videos or something. Okay. Make a video about how I, how I came to step, tell about the future, if I have a wife, I can tell my family about came to come to steps and stuff. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, so if you could share your name with us and how long you've been with Step. My name is Harold Usery and I've been with Step for five years. Very good, very good. And what is the best part about STEP to you? My best part of STEP is learning how to do stuff individually and how to learn how to take care of your stuff and keep it, um, keep it up with, with you, so. Okay, okay. And who at STEP has helped you learn things? His name is Robert. He's one of my skills trainer. He helped me with a lot of stuff. I, I didn't know how to do bellows. I didn't know how to pack the bellows and stuff. He showed me how to do that, and I'm a fast learner, so I, I fit easily. Great. What would you say is a, a goal that you're working on right now, something you're working on? Working on my license. So I'm working on that, and mm -hmm. I'm, wearing, I'm learning how to come to work and be prepared for work because that job is for preparing for you to go to the real, to get out there in the real world to try to see, okay, you coming in, or you gonna be late, or you gotta call off. This is practice to tell y'all the, this is the key to go to work. Yes, definitely. So, do you have a, a, a goal for a future job? Like, yeah, I wanna work? do, I wanna do janitorial. Okay. They, they teaching us how to do janitorial at the job too, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have a place, like, that you wanna work at? A hospital. The janitorial at a hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, and tell us how you're working towards getting your license. Working towards it. Um, it's I'm 30 years old, and I know it's kind of hard because at the age 16, they do driving training. So now I have to find a driving school to see who takes adults. But when I'm, I'm working towards it, I might, I might have to do it in November and work up towards like saving money, how to get there and how to get back and how to do stuff on your own. 